Hello and welcome to the official Stan YouTube channel. If you have a website or do any kind of marketing, then you may have come across the term click-through rate. In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about Bayesian modeling and how it can help you make better inference on your click-through rate to better understand it and help promote your website. At the center of all Bayesian computation is Bayes' theorem. In order to get to Bayes' theorem, we start at the conditional probability. The conditional probability is the probability of an event happening with some um, relationship to one or more other events. In this case, imagine we have two dependent events, A and B. We can write the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of both A and B, the joint probability of A and B, divided by the probability of B. Similarly, we can write for the conditional probability of B given A that it is equal to the probability of the joint probability of A and B divided by the probability of A. In these equations, you can see they both share the joint probability of A and B. Rearranging for this and then using substitution, we then arrive at Bayes' theorem. Though seemingly simple, Bayes' theorem is a powerful equation that is the basis for all Bayesian computation. The left-hand side of the equation is called the posterior, and this is usually what we're most interested in. We're interested in B, but we also want to take into account A. In a typical setting, B would be some model parameter that we're interested in, and A would be the data that we've collected. To answer this, Bayes' theorem turns the question around to look at the likelihood. The likelihood asks how consistent the model parameter is with the data. We don't know what the model parameter is, so in the worst case scenario, you'd have to try all the possible values. But samplers like Stan means that we don't have to. We will get to that very soon. Before that, we also have the prior. The prior encodes the domain expertise, the information that we have about the parameter before we've even collected any data. The denominator is the evidence, or sometimes also called the marginal posterior, because we marginalize, or in other words, integrate out all the possible values of the parameter b for the prior times the likelihood. This ensures that our probabilities sum to 1. It's a normalization term and generally we don't care about it unless we're doing model comparisons. So generally we can write our Bayes' theorem as a proportionality. Okay, now let's see Bayes' theorem in action. Let's say that we want to make a campaign. We don't know what platform is the best one to choose for our campaign, so we're going to post the same advert in both Facebook and Twitter. We will set an audience limit to 10 people to start because we don't have that much money. But later, depending on which platform performs better, we can decide um, which platform to continue with our adverts. So our data is going to be an array of 10 numbers where one means that they saw the ad and clicked it and zero means they saw the ad and didn't click it. We have this for both Facebook and Twitter. Additionally, we can calculate the click-through rate and actually this is usually provided by the platform. It's given as the number of clicks divided by the number of impressions, the number of people that saw the ad. So it's essentially the probability of clicking. Here you can see that the click-through rate for Twitter is much higher than Facebook. So we could stop there and say that clearly Twitter is the best, but actually our sample size is very small here. The click-through rates do not come with uncertainties. 
With Bayesian inference, we can actually quantify the amount of uncertainty in these values. So let's do this using STAN. STAN has three main blocks. In the data block, we need to declare our data. These are integer arrays of size n, and we also need to declare the integer n, and this is the number of impressions. In the parameters block, we need to declare the parameters. In this model, we have two parameters, the click-through rate for both Facebook and for Twitter. These are real arrays. They can take any value. But since they are probabilities, we give them a hard boundary of being between zero and one. In the model block, we need to define the prior on our parameters. If we don't, then it will default to an unbounded uniform distribution. Here, since we're not so sure on what the click-through rate should be, we choose a beta 1-1 distribution. This is the same as a uniform between zero and one distribution. The tilde sign means that theta is distributed as beta one one, or sometimes said as theta is drawn from a beta one one distribution. Next, we need to define the likelihoods. Our data takes values of zero and one, so we will say that the data is drawn from a Bernoulli distribution. This is a special type of binomial distribution, which is a discrete probability distribution with variables of value one with probability p and zero otherwise. Lastly, we will include a generated quantities block. This is where we include variables that we're interested in that are computed from previously declared variables. Here, we will add a delta theta term for a direct comparison between the probabilities of the two click-through rates. This block is completely optional, but it will help much more later on. Now we can fit the data to the model, letting Stan do all of the hard work. We can extract the parameters from the fit, and these are the posteriors on the click-through rate. If we plot these distributions, you can see that even though the peak of the distribution corresponds to the analytical click-through rates, the actual uncertainty on them is still quite large. This is because the data is random, and given that the data set that we have is so small, we may have a very high click-through rate on Facebook, but just out of simple randomness, the first 10 didn't click. We can also plot the distribution of the generated quantity delta theta for a direct comparison. Here, zero means the probabilities are the same. But as you can see, there's a lot of posterior mass saying that the theta one parameter, the click-through rate for Facebook, could be higher than theta two, that for Twitter. The uncertainty on our posterior shrinks with the amount of data that we have. So if we rerun the model after a hundred audience limit, you will see just that. And now let's keep going with even more data samples. Okay, so now we see that even though in the first 10 samples it looked like the click-through rate for Twitter was so much higher than that for Facebook, over time, with more samples gathered, it turns out that the Facebook click-through rate is actually higher. And we can say so with certainty. We can calculate the mean and the standard deviation on this. It was just down to chance that the first 10 samples got the click-through rate it did. Thank you for watching. For more content like this, make sure you subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave us a like and I'll see you next time.